Hello everyone, this is Loco S, and in today's video we're going to be going over a full startup for the UH-1 Huey. Uh, this is a full startup in the sense that this will get your aircraft uh, systems all lined up and everything ready to go to do basically any mission in DCS. Uh, this is not a by-the-book startup that they would do in real life. Uh, I might try to attempt that later on uh, for fun, but this is going to basically get you, uh, it's going to cut out the fluff and it's going to get you all your systems set up and ready to go so that way when you're doing your mission uh, you don't have to worry about fussing with too many extra things mid-mission. So first thing to note uh, we want to uh, get our ground crew to connect ground power. Uh, the Huey does chew up quite a bit of ground power um, when starting up and we won't be able to uh, basically set up some of our systems before um, starting up the aircraft otherwise so go ahead and connect ground power. Chief, turn on the ground power. And when we do so, Copy. we're going to want to uh, slam the uh, low, audio, low RPM audio off. Power is now on. There we go, we saved our hearing. Alright, uh, get rid of our pilot body by going uh, left shift P, as always. And we want to go up here. And we want to adjust our lighting so we can actually see. Uh, first off, we want to go to battery on, uh, main generator to on. Uh, AC phase to uh, set our voltmeter to AC phase. Uh, we don't necessarily need to turn on the uh, inverter right now because it's a little bit annoying to have it on all the time uh, listening to it. Uh, we want to turn our lighting up so that way we can see. We can see all of our panels. Uh, we can go ahead and turn our dome lighting as desired. Uh, we don't necessarily need dome lighting. Uh, it's going to be bright out enough uh, in a little bit. So let's go ahead and just turn on all of our instrument lighting. While we're up here, we might as well turn on our radar altimeter switch. And to let everyone know that we are starting up, uh, anti-collision lights to on, uh, position lights to uh, bright, so everyone can see us. We'll go for steady lights uh, for our position lights. Uh, wipers, if it was raining out, we can have either the co-pilot's wipers going, on, going uh, setting up our pilot wipes, pilot, uh, which are wipers, or both. And then we could turn them on and off here. Uh, we don't necessarily need to worry about that. It is a, d a dry day out today. Uh, for fun, we can set our bleed air on so we can uh, get a little bit of natural air conditioning. And we want to turn our position, our NVG position lights on as well. Uh, we don't necessarily need them, uh, but we might as well have them on in the uh, relatively uh, dark day out we have out today. Not a dark morning. Going down here, since we're not going into combat, we can uh, turn our lever armament panel off. If we knew we were going into combat, we could have our armament panel set to safe. And then once we go into combat, we can go to armed. But since we're not going into any combat today, we'll leave it off. Same goes here for the countermeasures panel. Uh, you can I would leave it uh, in a safe position for today because we're doing a civilian flight. But if I knew I was heading more or less straight into combat, I would just leave that armed. And again, same way with the armament panel, if I was going straight into combat, just turn it right to arm right away. Uh, that way you don't forget, but since we're not doing any combat today, uh, we can save our countermeasures and go to armament to off. And if we were going into combat, we can also select our first weapon that we were going to employ. Uh, in this case, we're uh, either for rockets or for guns, and you would set up your salvo for your rockets. Uh, zoom in a little bit here so you can see this. Uh, rocket pair of one basically is shoots off a pair of rockets, and that's the least amount of rockets you can fire. Or you can go for a full salvo of seven rockets, and this will empty out your seven uh, your seven count rocket pods. So I would just uh, leave it on one when you're training, uh, get an idea of how far the rockets fire and like sort of where they hit. And then once you're more confident, you can go uh, up to like say two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, depending on how many rockets you want to fire off at a single time. Next up, uh, we want to uh, get our radios up and running. Uh, I did realize that I did uh, fat finger in, or didn't type in the right uh, ATC frequency here. It is, uh, for Tinian International, it is 250.05, uh, not 0.5. We want to swap our uh, radio on to transmit receive, or if we wanted to, we could also select uh, transmit receive plus guard. 
and we want to switch our radio switch up to two. Uh, radio switch at two brings up the UFH radio here, and that is what you'll. And UFH radio, uh, this is your main uh, radio communication radio. So, might as well select it to two right now. Hit your radio transmit button, not your uh, general communications menu. If you hit general communications menu and you try to go to ATC. In field one one request startup. You might not get that. Uh, you could also uh, click your radio uh, control panel, uh, button, and we'll do that right now. And so we've got clearance for starting up, and we'll uh, use our radio button to uh, request clearance later on. Uh, I would also select the uh, nav uh, receiver nav switch to off while we set up our navigation radio. Uh, we know we want to. Uh, there's someone we want to find on frequency four five. Uh, FM, uh, FM, sorry, free, uh, sorry, frequency modulation of 45 megahertz, and later on in this mission, so we'll set up that navigation radio up here. We'll also want to go down here, and we also know we want to navigate to an ADF beacon in the mission, so we'll go down here and tune to that radio beacon down here. I won't do that uh, in full because it's this radio, this tuning uh, button uh, scrolls very slowly. So we want to say that we're tuned to our ADF frequency there right now. And also, we want to turn that ADF frequency uh, on right there. Also, if we were doing uh, VFH, uh, VF, if we knew we had a frequency on uh, VHF, we would set that frequency. We would turn on the power right there, and then set the frequency by uh, scrolling on this knob right here. Uh, there is actually a ship we want to talk to, so we'll just go ahead and just. Do that later on for our mission. And we also have a navigation com, uh, com panel up here. This is how you activate your um, ILS beacons. But we just want to leave that uh, off for this mission. But if you need to set it up, set it up right now in here. And that'll set up all of your radios. Uh, that'll set up all of your radios for navigation and communication. Uh, I would generally leave uh, most of if you, I would plan out most of your comms for the Huey based on uh, presets up here, because it's a little bit easier and faster to switch up, switch up presets. So uh, you, you have to do that, unfortunately, through the mission editor, I believe. I don't know. I don't think there's a way to set it up uh, here in the cockpit. So just keep that in mind. So all of our navigation and, and radio communication equipment is set up. If we need to switch radios, by the way, during the mission, uh, I'll go over this more in detail later, but this switch right here does it. So but we're going to leave it in two for right now. We up to the IFF panel, all we have to do is right click this uh, twice, and that brings up the IFF into normal, which will clear that caution light. And force trim on, hydraulic controls on, uh, get those switch ups. Uh, next up, I believe after that then, for our uh, cold startup, uh, we want to get our inverters up because we're now ready to start our engine. Inverter on the main. Fuel pumps on. That brings up all of that, and there are some there are some minor things we want to take care of here while we're starting up the engine. So we'll go ahead and get the uh, engine starter going. Notice how the panel dims. If we didn't have uh, ground power, uh, this would entirely shut off, and we wouldn't be able to start our engines. So there is that going for us. Well, the gas producer is increasing in RPM, we want to make sure our compass is set correctly. And you know it's set correctly uh, when the circle and the X are uh, both on the screen, like that, roughly in that area. You're not going to get super precise with this, but you can get fairly close. Uh, our gas producer is at 20, so we can go ahead and start introducing uh, our th throttle with the page up key. Let go of the starter at 40. Keep on introducing throttle with the page up key. Uh, verify the compass heading HSI is set correctly with our uh, backup uh, manual, our backup magnetic compass here. And it looks like it, the, our HSI is set up correctly. 
we want to use uh, ADF navigation, so we'll set up our thing to ADF. Uh, if we want to, if we want to have a certain heading bug uh, pre uh, set up, we can go ahead and select our heading bug like so. Uh, ADI looks good. Uh, altimeter is zeroed out to our uh, airfield pressure. If we wanted to set it to a different uh, setting, uh, like uh, if we wanted to set it to our what our sea level, we could go ahead and adjust the pressure the altimeter as such. But we'll keep it here at uh, sea level for the time being. But we'll keep it at a uh, Airfield pressure altimeter as time being. That looks good. Time looks good. Uh, Mercury beacon, we don't need that for this mission, so we can leave that as is, or we can turn it on if we need to. And the most important thing before we take off, uh, we want to set our uh, radar altimeter uh, up. If you are adjusting these controls and nothing's coming up, uh, make sure you go back up here and turn on the radar altimeter switch back up here. So we want to set our high uh, warning altitude warning to 150 and our low altitude warning to 50 feet. If you want to test, we can hold it in and it'll showcase that to make sure it's on. So now that the helicopter is started up, we can go to a head communication key, go to uh, ground crew, tell them to disconnect ground power. might have to go to Interphone for this. Chief, turn off the ground power. Or do the actual uh, radio button to call them up. Chief, turn off the ground power. Copy. There we go. Uh, sometimes the uh, game is fussy with... Uh, this communication menu, uh, even though the doors are wide open and we can literally just like lean out and shout to the ground uh, with the crew chief to turn off the uh, ground power, uh, sometimes you have to actually uh, switch uh, radios and actually use the in-game radio menu key. So now that we have the in-game uh, radio menu key uh, set up and the ground power disconnected, we can switch from uh, intraphone up to uh, two. So. Now we're now we now we switched from interphone, which communicates to our ground crew, to our uh, main radio our main uh, radio for communication. Um, we're now in Circuit Breaker UHF, which is our main radio. We want to talk to uh, Tinian International Airport, and we want to request a hover check. And while we do that, we want to close the doors. Right Control C. And with that, we are all ready to go. We just want to go down here. And reset master caution to get rid of that. All engine gauges are in the green, so we are good to go. And with that, our Huey is set up and ready for your mission. Um, if you want to en enable uh, FM navigation, you can go here down to the net receiver nav switch, turn it on, and that way, uh, go ahead and home it on that beacon. Uh, I enabled subtitles for this uh, radio beacon, so we can go ahead and set that to home if we want to set up navigate if we want to home in on a uh, an FM beacon. But that's a but the full tutorial on that will come later. Turn it off to set up to quiet that, and we're all done. So that's your startup in the UH one H Huey. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, take off right now. Uh, but I'll get a, I'll do a separate video for taking off in the Huey, as well as navigating and all those other fun things. So, until then, this is Loco S, signing out for BCS.